Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon. Um, as Islanders are well aware, the, situa the situation around COVID-19 is quickly changing. And within 24 hours, it's looking different, not just here, uh, it's across the country and, um, and really across the world. Uh, as you know, in the last couple of days, it, it was declared a pandemic. Um, and it, it signals the, the spread of the virus, how many countries, and also the speed at which uh, it is impacting um, so many people across the world. And Canadians and Islanders certainly uh, preparing and expecting that there will be a surge of cases uh, in the country and here on PEI. At this time, Prince Edward Island has no cases, but we, as, as I mentioned, we anticipate cases will come. Today, I have some recommendations that certainly uh, are different than the ones we've made before, but uh, we've said all the time it changes so quickly that uh, we need to uh, evolve and make our recommendations based on good public health evidence as we go forward. The biggest priority for me and for, for all of us is to make sure we keep Islanders as healthy and safe as possible. And uh, we'll continue to keep that as the priority um, foremost in our minds. So thinking about that, um, and based on certainly what's going on across the country and the world, I'm asking Islanders to cancel all non-essential travel outside the country, and that includes the United States. I'm also for asking any Islanders who have traveled internationally, that's anywhere outside of Canada, including the United States, that they should self-isolate for 14 days when they return, whether they are experiencing symptoms or not. And uh, that is where uh, there's certainly a key difference from what we were talking about previously. And self-isolation means staying at home for 14 days. Islanders should also con uh, reconsider attending social gatherings or meetings where a two meter distance is not possible, especially if the elderly or immunocompromised uh, are present. And uh, again, that I realize has an impact um, on uh, many things that we do. I think the, the social distancing, you, I think people are hearing about that in the media. It's, um, it's more than just mass gatherings. It's, uh, it's about trying to keep people as safe as possible. We know that this is a virus that's spread through respiratory droplets. So uh, coughing uh, and uh, uh, coughing a certain distance and that's why that two meters uh, is um, uh, mentioned. And it, it, uh, social distancing is also about thinking about alternative ways to meet. So uh, whether a meeting, be, for instance, could be held virtually. I appreciate that all these recommendations have impacts on all of us in our community and in all parts of our system um, and uh, for families and for staff and how people work. And, uh, and they'll, uh, they'll impact my own uh, office, they'll impact my home life. And, but we thought it's very important that I'm clear about these recommendations before people go on March break. And um, we, uh, we appreciate that people may have already traveled, but this is, um, uh, uh, we know that there may be others who uh, have a chance to change their travel plans. Um, I, I mean, I, there's certainly information that we can talk about that we've mentioned before about um, if you return from travel and you do get symptoms, you call 811. Uh, we, un we realize that over the last uh, few days, uh, 811 is experiencing an extremely high call volume and there have been issues yesterday as a result of that. They've added 23 new lines and hired additional staff. It's important to note 811 is a shared service with Nova Scotia and PEI and Nova Scotians are also having the increased demand uh, for the number of calls. Uh, so it's, um, it's being felt in both provinces. 
Um, but the 811 is really to screen um, people, and uh, if they have the symptoms, then they will be tested um, if they have a travel history. And there are testing clinics that have been set up earlier this week, as many of you are aware, and they're being held in Charlottetown and Summerside uh, seven days a week. Um, I know it, it, uh, it seems like I keep repeating some of this, but it's, it's Im really important. So when we talk about these are all public health measures that may limit the spread and the speed at which we um, see the cases and may limit the number of cases we see on Prince Edward Island. So anything we can do to uh, manage that I think is really important. Um, we talk about it in, in public health as flattening the curve. So instead of having a huge number of cases go up and down, maybe with some of these measures in place, it will go up or with our number of cases, but it won't go up as high. And that will be really key um, if, um, so that we can manage as a system too um, with the number of cases we expect to see. So. Public health measures include some of what we talked about, but also the really important things of hand washing, not touching your face, proper cough etiquette, and uh, staying home when you're, s when you're sick, and, in, and uh, that social distancing that uh, we're referring to. The fear and anxiety that goes along with uh, a new virus and, and a pandemic virus is so understandable. Um, and it, we feel it in our community, we feel it in our coworkers. Uh, our children are asking questions uh, about what it means for them. We do have to remember that 80 to 85% of cases of COVID are mild illness. If, um, so for many people, they will not be really sick if they get uh, COVID-19, um, but there are certainly increased risk, especially of more moderate and severe illness if you are elderly or immunocompromised. I also know Islanders not only want to protect themselves, but they do not want to spread illness to others in their families or communities. And, um, and so I, I think these are recommendations that um, they will um, embrace because they do want to do the right thing, they do not want to get sick, and they do not want to um, spread illness to others. Um, I think I may leave it um, at that and open it up to some questions, and I, I expect some questions uh, uh, going forward. So um, uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm going to ask a few questions, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, how many uh, tests have you done for COVID-19? Yeah, so before the testing clinics were set up, we were doing very, we'd done possibly less than 10 uh, tests because it was um, related to just those returning travelers from Hubei or Iran who developed symptoms. Um, and I, the, n the number of cases are going, uh, are be people being tested uh, uh, certainly has increased in the last number of days with the clinics, so I don't have an exact number, but I know there have been people at the clinics in both Charlottetown and Summerside yesterday and Charlottetown and Summerside today, so we're going to be able to have that number and um, we're happy to post it uh, on the website. We, I just don't have it right here with me, but um, we'll be doing that going forward and because we want to have a, um, it available for the tests that have been done, and then of course those have come back negative, those are pent, and then the tests that are pending, and then um, when the cases are positive, those will be of course listed there as well. And, I, and just to confirm at this point, no confirmed cases. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and what about uh, schools after March break? Mm -hmm. We obviously saw that some places are uh, tacking on two weeks because even though you maybe have these recommendations, people might still go anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to be recommending that as well? So at this point, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, um, Alberta, BC uh, are not doing school closures at this time. So at this time, we're just saying any staff, students, anyone who is um, in the school system who's been traveling are not allowed to go back to the school. Having said that, this is a, uh, we are watching closely and school closures may be something that we even announce 
next week. I mean, I would not have even said I would be doing this a week ago, so I mean, it, it just changes. Um, th there's lots of considerations about school closures. Certainly, the timing of it. Um, uh, we don't have a case here yet, um, but you want to get ahead of it, and th these are why we're doing some of these fairly dramatic recommendations. Um, we, but we also need to balance that with learning's important, and if we keep everyone who's traveled um, uh, out of the school system, that may protect others. Almost all the cases in Canada are travel-related, um, and so I think that we need to keep that in mind of, of what we, uh, we know about that. Um, uh, about the travel, so it's uh, it's something that's certainly a possibility. But at this point, it is staff and students at schools who travel who will not be um, are not recommended to return. And sorry, in the release it says uh, you know these are your recommendations, but that uh, Islanders who do travel are required. I just want to clarify that as well. Is it recommended or required? <laughs> I, I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't think we even, we, we put this together pretty quickly, so I don't know if we spent too much time uh, on the wording. I mean, it is not a health order, uh, um, but it is, it's a recommendation, a public health recommendation, uh, and how uh, employers and, and the system puts that in place, that may be up to um, the, their own business or government, but it is um, a recommendation that I think is in the best uh, health and safety interests of Islanders, and I certainly uh, I think, I, as I mentioned, I think Islanders don't want uh, to spread illness uh, to the people they love and care about in, in on the province. I'll mm -hmm. ask one last question, then I'll hand <laughs> over the microphone, mm -hmm. I promise. Uh, and any uh, sort of recommendation towards daycares closing, anything like that? I mean, the same principle would apply at this point in time for daycares in terms of anyone, uh, any child who has traveled. Uh, um, then they should uh, not go to daycare, and any staff person at a daycare, if they've traveled for those 14 days, they should not attend. Um, and again, when uh, again that can change uh, uh, um, as we go forward, and if we do, it, uh, uh, schools and daycares uh, would be both um, considerations for uh, recommendations. Just uh, going to ask some questions about public uh, workers to start. Uh, so for uh, employees within the health system right now, is it a requirement of Health PEI or, and the Department of Health that they not, if they have traveled outside within the last 14 days, to not go to work at this point? Yeah, so I mean, I think, uh, as you can imagine, this is something that's new for for the health system too. So I think they're having some of those conversations uh, right now and um, and I'll be involved in some of those conversations um, later on today as we have a joint response structure um, with the health system. And of course, there's also a situation table for all of government. And, but uh, I, uh, I, again, I would uh, think that they'll be quite clear on, on um, on making sure if you return from travel, you don't come to work because you don't want to uh, in put at risk other um, other healthcare workers, but most importantly, their patients. And um, uh, so both, uh, and because the patients may be immunocompromised or elderly. Uh, the one thing I didn't perhaps emphasize was, uh, and we've mentioned it earlier, that uh, anyone who, um, has traveled uh, should not for 14 days should not go visit someone in a long, long term care facility. So I know we've said that before, um, but I just want to emphasize uh, that because uh, that's also part of that social distancing for a very vulnerable uh, group. Okay, so um, I mean, obviously we we heard the news that the health minister James Aylward uh, was out of country within the last 14 days. Does that mean that he is now he under is self quarantine? Yeah, he's uh, uh, he's in mm -hmm. self isolation uh, right. as of. Morning, yes. Are there other cabinet ministers who are currently in self-isolation? I I don't know. I, I yeah I I I'm not aware of any. But I, certainly I know that uh, um, the the minister uh, Aylward and he would be here with me. And I know he uh, indicated he would like to be here with me. But this is not the time. <laughs> for the next two weeks. Is the premier in self-isolation? Has the premier been outside of the country in the last 14 days? Well, I mean, again, I I'm not sort of. Uh, following all the, the travel history uh, of, um, of the government officials, but uh, I think uh, it'll be um, important for him, for him 
not to leave the, I mean, just he'll be following the same recommendations uh, as everybody else, that if he leaves the, the country, um, then uh, when upon his return, um, he'll be asked to self-isolate. Just talking about the clinics, I guess, uh, in terms of like the Charlottetown and Summerside clinics. So I guess they, they've been open since Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Charlottetown, and, and Thursday, Summerside. So what kind of volume of testing have we seen at both locations? I think there had been a, the first day, uh, as expected, there were a handful in both um, in both sites. I, I'm sorry, I don't have the actual exact numbers, um, but uh, those are people who were screened through 811, they were contacted and advised to come in, and then they self-isolate at home until the results come back. Um, and then results negative or positive um, are, are given to them and then uh, go from there. So if it's negative, then that's great. They still shouldn't go back to work if they're not feeling well, but it, um, it would take the, certainly relieve them of uh, knowing that they do not have COVID if the test result comes back negative. And it's respiratory season, so we expect people to have coughs and colds uh, that may not be uh, related to COVID as well, and we still have influenza circulating, so um, there's other reason, uh, other things that can be making people feel unwell. Um. Can, you, can you talk a little bit about, I guess, the healthcare workers who are going to be at these clinics, like sort of how people are being isolated from, I guess, like, like for example, are the clinics even in uh, an existing hospital facility? Like, are they, are they at a yeah. separate distance? You know? And I mean, and the, the clinics, I think, are a, a bit of a, um, they'll, they'll need to adjust depending on numbers and what's needed. Um, so they're not in the acute care sector. The, the, the reason the clinics were set up was to try to make sure that people weren't presenting to emergency departments um, with uh, needing to be tested. So that's why they were sort of uh, set up outside. So they are in uh, facilities that are, um, that are, I guess, um, leased uh, by health, uh, but uh, are not in an acute care sector. And, but they may change because as, uh, as volume changes, um, how we respond and, and how we test people also may change. Uh, and so for instance, if someone's being tested, um, if they are coming and they don't have a mask, they, someone goes out to meet them uh, with a mask on, the healthcare worker goes out and meets them with a, a mask, gives the person a mask um, and brings them directly in, does the test, it doesn't take very long, and then they are um, put back, or not put back, but they go back into the, uh, their car and then they go home. So it's, it's a fairly short, um, controlled, uh, uh, limited exposure uh, procedure at this time. How many staff are, are currently at these clinics? I'm not, I mean, you're asking good questions. They're, they're fairly operational about the clinics that um, thankfully there are people who sort of look after that part and I'm not directly ma managing those uh, clinics. Um, but uh, for instance, on the call this afternoon, those are the kinds of updates that uh, I hope to get uh, um, from the clinics. But uh, we certainly didn't want to wait uh, until the end of the day to make these kind of um, recommendations. Just one last question. Um, can, you, can you talk a little bit about uh, the decision to not close schools at this time? I mean, mm -hmm. I understand other provinces haven't, but for, for the case here in Prince Edward Island, mm -hmm. why, why the decision not at this stage to close schools? Well, I, I think, um, and uh, at this point in time, it is uh, not felt that we need to close schools uh, for public health uh, uh, reasons. Um, it is um, something absolutely we will consider uh, going forward um, and we have next week there's no school next week so it's already closed for a week um, we also want to make sure that because the, the evidence shows us that uh, the cases in this country are travel related that's where we need to uh, make the initial recommendation um, and uh, but things certainly can change a, as we go forward uh, there's uh, so there's certainly decision uh, going into that um, knowing that uh, a certain number of staff and students will be out at this point. I have one more question. Um, how, I know a lot of people will be wondering how long these recommendations might be in place for, of course they're evolving and changing, but you know, for those, let's say they have trips planned in April and May, how long are you uh, thinking this might last for? Well, I mean, um, 
these coronavirus outbreaks tend to, from what we know about them in the past, they last six to eight weeks. And when you look at what happened in China, um, where the, the Hubei province, really it was an uh, eight week increase in cases and now the, the a uh, number of cases coming out of that area in China are much, much reduced. So, um, and, and I think that also plays into when do you close schools, you know, and, and what impact can that have. Um, the, uh, so I think at this point in time, it will be for at least one to two months. Um. Are we but knowing that it's it can change, like we we'll have to see um, what happens in PEI, what our cases are. If we're doing all these things, we may minimize, uh, but I don't think we'll necessarily minimize it. We'll just limit some of um, the speed and the number of cases um, that we get here. I will yeah. start the question in English, but I would like to know if you can ask the same question in French. After. Okay, je vais faire quand même. Je peux essayer. I can I can ask you the question okay. in English first. Okay. Um, you spoke about recommendations. Um, can we speak about gathering? Like, is there you know um, a maximum number of people mm. in the same place? I will just take maybe an example. Do you think that tomorrow you need to shut down the farmers market in Charlottetown? Mm. There is an event in in Tyne Valley, you know, for the craft book event on Saturday night. Do you ask to them maybe to cancel the event too? Mm -hmm. um, so. <laughs> And what you're talking about is exactly what we're struggling to get the right uh, messaging out. Um, so mass gatherings, really, that that language is about huge numbers of people. And you see um, different provinces, I, I believe Alberta, BC, Quebec, saying any, uh, any gathering that has more than 250 people. New Brunswick has said any gathering more than 100 people. But the science is really less about the number of people, although the number of people increases the exposure, but it's really about any exposure. So if a group of 40 people, um, especially if you're immunocompromised or elderly, that's when I would consider, um, reconsider, do you need to go? Um, and uh, so uh, it, it won't be, um, uh, uh, I would, and I think a lot of the bigger events are actually uh, canceling themselves. Um, and uh, but I, I think um, I'm less concerned about the number of people. But uh, if, if there's a church supper um, or some kind of potluck thing for 80 people, it's just uh, as risky as 100 people. And so it's about whether or not you can keep a distance of uh, that social distancing while you're at that event uh, in a safe way um, and not, um, uh, and, and so especially because we don't know if anyone's been traveling. Um, so it's, uh, it, there's no perfect answer to it, but uh, it's um, trying to uh, increase all of our awareness around the importance of that uh, social distancing. Just a follow-up okay. in English first. So okay. definitely the farmer's market can be open tomorrow. I mean, I think the farmer's market is one of those things that you go in and out. You're not there for any, you know, I guess it depends on if you <laughs> sit and hang out. But uh, uh, if you're going in and out um, and you're able to, uh, um, and you're healthy, and it would be like going to get groceries. You know, you go in, you get what you need, uh, and, and go, and, uh, and don't stand really close to someone face to face um, when you're at the market. En français. Okay, uh, je, je vais quand même ici. Um, um, alors pour les, um, les événements pour un grand groupe, um, il faut uh, penser um, plutôt qu'il faut avoir la distance entre les gens. Um, il faut être en santé. Um, et uh, ce n'est pas sur, uh, sur tous les, le nombre de personnes, mais qu'il faut, uh, dans ces groupes, protéger um, les personnes qui sont là, qui sont um, âgées ou qui sont, uh, ont des uh, maladies chroniques. Um, alors, c'est de protéger vraiment notre communauté, pas seulement uh, vous-même, mais, mais la communauté, en, en faisant des mesures de de distance vraiment um, dans ces uh, rencontres ou des événements comme ça.
Très bien. Okay. En, en, en français, est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire qu'il n'y a toujours aucun cas à l'île du Prince-Édouard et quelle est la, la situation aujourd'hui? Okay. Um, aujourd'hui, il n'y a aucun cas, mais on est en train de faire plein de tests um, um, et on, um, on anticipe d'avoir des cas qui arrivent et dans les prochaines semaines, uh, um, même qu'au Canada, qu'on va avoir plus de cas. Un mot sur les écoles. Pour l'instant, aucune fermeture, mais même chose. Vous vous attendez à ce que possiblement la semaine prochaine, on allonge oui. les vacances scolaires. C'est possible. Et puis, si c'est um, um, la semaine prochaine ou la semaine après, n'importe quand, ça peut arriver. Mais à ce moment, um, pour plusieurs raisons, on a euh, dit seulement que les personnes qui voyagent, euh, retournent de voyage, les, les enseignants, les étudiants, ne euh, sont pas à l'école. Euh, mais ça peut changer. Euh, tout ce qu'on dit euh, change parce que ça, ça, tellement, ça change tellement vite. Mais vous conseillez quand même, pendant ces vacances scolaires, parents, enfants, euh, professeurs, de ne pas voyager à l'étranger. Exactement. Si, si euh, vous euh, ne... Euh, si vous ne devez pas partir, euh, restez ici. Autre ou, ou au Canada. C'est de ne pas voyager hors du Canada euh, et c'est aussi les États-Unis. Je vais poser cette question en anglais. Je pense que les, mes collègues okay. vont, être, vont, vont aimer ça. Um, did you have any discussions with the, auto, the port of Charlottetown about the cruise ship season? Did you say to them that maybe it's safer to cancel the first Boats of the season. So uh, the question, uh, the answer is yes. I did have discussions with them, but the decision around um, the uh, delay or postponement of any cruise ship uh, is a federal one, and so I uh, actually anticipated uh, announcements probably this week uh, about the cruise ship um, uh, industry because it Im impacts not only Prince Edward Island but Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Quebec, and also British Columbia uh, would be impacted. And uh, so I, we've had a discussion with them. We have another um, discussion set up, um, I believe, next week. But I, I think some of that will be led by the um, federal uh, guidance. En français, et après je vous embête okay. plus. <laughs> okay. Um, les cruises. Euh, euh, les bateaux de croisière. Ah oui, les, les bateaux de croisière. Euh, J'imagine que euh, ça va être une décision euh, fédérale. Euh, et, euh, mais je suis en contact avec euh, les officiaux ici. Donc, vous avez eu des rencontres et vous allez encore avoir des rencontres. Oui, exactement. Merci. 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 Oh. OK. Are there any plans for people that may be homeless to uh, what the province is doing to assist with those people? Um, and, so the, and the homeless who may have traveled in the, uh, or returning from travel? So, I mean, I think that's a really go good question. Um, I think um, we ha do not have sustained community transmission in this country at this point in time, um, but this is some of these measures are to try to limit that um, uh, community transmission uh, when it comes. But I think those are the kinds of things that are really important as we prepare about what this may look like. Um, and uh, and although I, I didn't talk about it, some of these recommendations are. Are, are hard because we are we know how important communication and interaction uh, and community is for for everyone and uh, um, so some of these uh, are counter um, intuitive for some of those things but it is hopefully uh, a short term uh, relatively short term recommendation that will protect islanders um, and, and protect especially those who um, if we can minimize those who can get really sick here on PEI. Um, but uh, certainly I think a, a good uh, question, and, and that would be something that, uh, a question we can take to the sort of cross-government uh, table that um, uh, of what uh, we may be doing at that point in time. Okay. Yeah. 
that sound good? Okay, uh, thanks. I think one of the things I think it's okay to mention, Amanda is, uh, and Samantha, that I know we've been sort of doing these updates sort of uh, every so often, um, but I think it may be just from now forward, we'll just have a, a regular, almost, I don't know, daily or... Uh, Anyway, uh, so that then there's always a set time, um, and then it, it also may be just, it's easier for um, um, the media, maybe easier for me, um, and then we can just, even if there's not a lot new, it's then just to even reemphasize some of the messages, or if you think of something particular you want to ask, um, and this seems to be evolving so quickly, I, I can only anticipate there are some ongoing updates as we go forward. Thank you.